Okay, this is the video for the apple that is both red and yellow. So we're going to use the same formula as what we've done before. So we're going to work with the base to start off. So in this case, I'm going to use red as my base, even though there is quite a bit of yellow. But we're just going to start off with red as our main base for this apple. So when painting this, we want to make sure all of our brush strokes are curving and they're going to meet toward that apple stem. And any little slip ups from the wooden box in the background, that'll allow us to touch those up as well. Have a little bit of green mixed in with my red paint. So it's making some traces of darker colors on my apple to start off, but that's okay. So I'm just going to go around the edges. We're just going to kind of trim edge of the apple just to get that shape back. So after I finish up with this base of red, I am going to apply my shadow color like what I've done before. So essentially we're going to work on this apple much like what we did with the apple at the very top up there. However, we're just introducing yellow into this. So that's pretty much the key difference. There is a little bit of green too that we can add as well. Just one little area left up here. I'm gonna try and reshape. All right, there we are. So I'm gonna work with my shadow color now. So I'm gonna take my green and red that already had some green in it. I'm gonna mix that up. And for this, I'm only gonna bring in a touch of violet. So I'm not gonna bring in very much at all because the shadow on the bottom of this apple is not super, super dark. Okay, so there's my shadow color. And I'm really just going to emphasize this at the bottom right here. Maybe a little bit in this area. And then I'm going to get my red. So on my brush, and I'm going to brush this into that darker shadow color. So since there are multiple, multiple colors on this apple, I'm going to do quite a bit of blending and layering with my paint. So I have a little bit extra paint on my brush. <clears throat> so 
I'm gonna try and get that extra paint off, kind of thin this paint out a little bit. And let me get a little more red, so just plain red on my brush. And I'm going to blend this into that shadow color. I don't mess up. It slipped a little bit. There we go. So as you're applying these additional layers of paint, just make sure that you are still curving your brush. So you're probably noticing as I'm getting to the edges of the apple, I'm uh, going around the, the sides and then I go back and reform and reshape the uh, brush strokes. So after I finish touching up the red, I'm gonna bring in my yellow. And if you look at the photo, there are some hints of orange too. So, you know, that's something that will definitely happen when we mix our paint, just because we're working with red and yellow, red and yellow make orange, but this also happens in nature. So that's why there are hints of orange on this apple. Some of that kind of mixing of the color creates a third color. Mixing of the two colors creates a third color. Uh, now I'm going to wipe off this extra paint on my brush. I'm going to pull some yellow onto my paintbrush and I'm going to start right here. And so with this yellow being thinner, I'm going to have to layer this quite a bit. So we're starting to see that creation of kind of a, an orange value that'll serve really almost as like an undertone for our painting. So since the red paint is still a little wet, that's why we're getting a lot of um, gradients and blending with this yellow. But as it starts to dry, that yellow is not gonna blend nearly as well, which is okay, because we do want it to kind of stand out at some point. So right now what I'm doing, I'm just kind of building up those lighter values that the brighter yellow values will essentially rest on. So I'm still just working with plain yellow on my paintbrush. I'm slowly going to make my way around here. So if your paint isn't blending super well, what's probably happening is that the paint has already dried. So you really just have to train your hand to, to work kind of quickly and know what you're gonna do with the paint. So right there, I just got a little bit of red on my brush just to kind of touch up this area because we don't have as much yellow in this area of the painting as we do in this area. All 
All right, so I just pulled the rest of the paint off of my brush. Now I'm going to go over this area again with yellow. And like I've said before, the yellow is pretty thin, so it does have a tendency to need to be layered quite a bit. So now we're starting to get those yellow values to stand out more. So right now my paint is kind of getting to this point where it's a little tacky. It's like trying to dry on me, but this also can give you an opportunity to kind of blend the paint pretty well. As long as you don't have a lot of paint on your brush, you're essentially just kind of using a, a brush that feels kind of gummy. And the paint kind of feels gummy, but it does allow the paint to kind of blend a little bit. So now I'm going to get one of my brushes that is completely dry. So I'm going to go over this with yellow again. And for this, I'm going to try not blend the yellow in as much, which it really shouldn't because the paint that I've already applied is starting to get kind of dry. So I'm using a round brush, which has a point to it. And I'm really just working with hatch lines to create that almost like starburst effect with the paint. Still need this to be a little brighter, so I'm going to layer that yellow on a little more. Still needs to curve. Need some yellow over here. And we do have a little bit of green that is a little, mostly visible on this side. So I'll introduce that green here in a second. So again, kind of the main component for painting is just, at least with the temper paint, is just Keep the water out of your brush because that can erase a lot of what you're doing. So just kind of keep that mantra in your head. So I'm probably working on like my fifth or sixth layer of paint right now. <clears throat> so as you work with these like final and last layers just remember not to press real hard on your paintbrush so right now what i'm about to do i'm just gonna barely 
touching the brush to the paper to get this effect. Because if I press too hard, the yellow is going to want to blend into what I've already painted too much, and it will essentially kind of blend out and it'll form that orange again. But we've already built up a lot of those orange layers, so we don't really need to do that. Kind of working around that area that I left for my apple stem, but I probably just have to paint over some of that. So the nice thing about this apple is that you can see the direction of these uh, yellow lines. So that really helps you in terms of knowing where to put that paint in the direction that you have to use your brush. Now as we get near the bottom or the, the right side of this apple, you know some of those yellow marks are blending into the, the red a lot more. They kind of look like they're just dissipating into it. So in order to get that effect, I'm just going to get a little bit of red on my brush here in a minute and then that'll help those yellows kind of blend in. First, I need to introduce a little bit of green. So I don't want too much. I'll try and get some of the extra green off my brush. So this green really appears more in the closer to the apple stem. And what I'm trying to get the green to do is blend into that yellow so it makes a little bit more of a yellow green. I'm just going to get a little more yellow on my brush and I'm going to kind of pick up where I left off with the green, kind of get that blending effect that we see. So I'm still using my round brush, which has the point to it. I think this is uh, in your paint sets, you should have two round brushes that have more of a point. And then you have two flat brushes. I know one of these is a number four. I can't remember what number the round brushes are. Probably a two and a, a one, somewhere around there. All right, so this is starting to come together. Now I'm just gonna get my red back. So I didn't even clean out my brush. And now I'm just kind of going along my edge and this should help those yellows and some of the oranges that were made kind of blend into what I've already done. get a tiny bit of yellow here just to kind of work with this blurring blending effect. 
So it's just kind of a back and forth process for this apple. So I'm doing, I'm just going over the edges now and then so I'm doing that with a curve line and then I blend that red back into like some of the yellows and green that I set down earlier. And I'm barely applying any pressure. So I'm just very lightly brushing over this. And let me get just a tiny bit more yellow. Go back on the edge here, try and blend some more of that in. Again, just kind of a back and forth process. Now we do have some other things happening with this apple. So there's a, uh, a reflection from the lemon right here. There's a reflection from the uh, yellow green apple as well. It's kind of down in this area. Then the lime is kind of reflected. You know, this is a little more difficult to achieve with tempera paint, not so much with like oil or something, but we can try this. So I'm just going to put down a curve of yellow. You get red on my brush. Kind of brush that red into the curve of the yellow and then just kind of fade this into kind of shape right here you may need a little more yellow and then um for the apple, just a little bit of yellow and green. So we're just gonna use kind of the same technique. Okay, do a little curve there, probably a little too much green. We'll put some more yellow in this. Then we're going to do the same on the other end. So not so much of a curve right here, but it's going to use the same technique. So I'm just going to get a little bit of yellow on top of that. Like I said, this is a little hard to get with oil paint or with temper paint, just because it's not as easy to blend and create realistic values as oil or sometimes acrylic.
And let me get a little bit of my shadow color and kind of touch up the shadow at the bottom. So right along here, it is a little darker. So I'm gonna do that and then get another brush without paint on it. Just kind of touch the edges to try and get that to blend in. And a little bit over here. Maybe just a little bit of red to blend that back in. All right, so we still need to work in a few areas like around the stem. We have some highlights we need to put in. So around the stem, it's not super dark, but it is kind of a yellow green with some darker values to it. So I'm gonna pick up some yellow, kind of mix it in where I already had my shadow color on my brush. And I'm gonna Put a little more green in this. And then just kind of starting right here. Just get a slight touch of green on my brush. Let's see if this helps blend in that shadow color to the rest of the apple a little. So I have very little paint on my brush. I'm just kind of using my brush to try and blend that paint into the brighter areas. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of yellow, try and emphasize this kind of brighter value right on the edge here. So don't get frustrated on, on this particular apple. It can be a little lengthy in terms of the process we're using, but it will get you there. Trust the process. I'm gonna get a little more yellow, just try and brighten up over here.
All right, we're, we're getting there. It's gonna take a little more yellow, kind of brush in. Just really need to make this area kind of pop a bit more. All right, so for the really bright highlights, we're just going to take yellow and a little bit of white. Actually, mostly white and a little bit of yellow. spin my brush to get that nice point back. So the key with this highlight is to kind of make it curve. So right now, like what I've done before, I'm just barely touching the brush to the painting, to the paper. We've got some kind of lighter highlights here. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of space, which will essentially kind of tell us where the stem will be. Kind of shadow from the stem, rather. And I'm just going to get a tiny, tiny bit of green on my brush kind of blend that at the very end of the shadow, or the highlight. Now I'm just using red to kind of blend where that green was. Try and push. So I'm going to wait for this to dry so I can do the stem. And in the meantime, I'm just going to try and push these yellows a little bit further, which will help emphasize the, the roundness or the spherical quality form of the apple.
And I'm gonna push some of these yellows just a little bit further over here too. Just try not to cover up the highlight that I have. All right, so for the stem, we have this uh, brownish color. It has a little more of a green tone to it. So I'm going to take green, mix it with just a little bit of red. A little bit more red. A little bit more red. There we go. And I'm just going to paint this on so where this starts. It's probably here. It crosses over. So right now my stem is pretty dark, but while the paint's still wet, I may get a little bit of white, maybe a little more white. And just lightly, carefully brush in kind of a highlight. Oh, it's a little sloppy. Get my shadow color back. There we go. And then for good measure, I'm just gonna get a little violet. I'm gonna go crazy here. A little violet at the very bottom. And maybe a little bit right at the edge. There we are. And I'm just going to make that little indent right there. And then I'm going to kind of blend this. So I'm still using whatever violet is left on my brush for that shadow. All right, so this is pretty much finished. This is still wet right here, which is why it hasn't, why it kind of sticks out just a little bit compared to the rest of the red. Uh, same in this area. I could probably like emphasize the, uh, maybe that kind of greenish tone a little bit more. So if I just kind of lightly go over this, that'll help that. Just get a little red on my brush, try and blend that in more. All right, so main thing with this apple is just really emphasize and work with the texture. 
to get that kind of exploding effect out of the middle where the apple stem is. So that'll be important. And every little brush stroke that you make should really kind of lead to this middle portion. All right.